Welcome back to the Whiskey Edition. Almost Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays. And today, we're gonna do kind of an oddball thing. I've got some comments back on a couple of the other videos uh, that the reviews were wanton, and that the, uh, <laughs> which I knew that, and um, that I'm kind of more of a comparison guy. And what else? Oh, that the review was, re reviews were really late in the video, like I blabbed a lot leading up to it. So gonna try not to do that and do a little bit, something a little bit different. First, we'll put on the Happy New Year hat, because why wouldn't we on New Year's Eve? And uh, go through some, what I'm calling the holiday haul. And uh, kind of through, uh, well, from Thanksgiving through to, you know, just yesterday actually. And kind of go through what, uh, uh, I've been gifted and picked up, do some unboxing, a couple things I've bought that I forgot that I, what, what's even in the box, and something as a gift that I have no idea. It could be, I think it's liquid, but we'll find out. But I thought I'm gonna bring up one item that I got yesterday that'll go into the video for a review as a comparison and a re-review of the Doers 32 Doers 21, double, double aged. So we'll do a Doers 32 for my 32 year retirement. We'll do the Doers 21 as a comparison. Picked this up yesterday at the Costco. And uh, we're gonna cut to that. I'm gonna do that later because I'm gonna go sampling with some friends of mine and I didn't wanna be all, you know, after the sampling and do this, all this uh, unwrapping and unboxing stuff and then do this. So I'm gonna do this after that, but before that, and then it'll all cut together and the review will be sooner in the video, which should make some people happy. I will hopefully have more notes and things to say about what is in the 32 versus in the 21. Uh, Curiosity Public did a fantastic Doers 32 review. They rated it very highly, and so maybe I can pull off uh, some of those um, uh, pull off some of those notes and um, some of their uh, feelings about it. They, you know, again, they rated it very, very high, like almost 100 in some cases. And so mine, I guess I just said it was smooth and not bad, but I also had had barbecue that day. And that was, I think, kind of messing up my, uh, you know, being able to get, you know, what few notes out of it that I could. Uh, so we'll do that, do a comparison to the 21. I don't know if it'll be blind or I'll just do them side by side or whatever, we'll figure out. And if it was the case where I'm gonna go do some uh, samplings and tastings with some neighbors here after a bit, and I'm not able to do it, you won't know the difference because I could do this anytime, but at least all this stuff back here will be opened this year for you. So cut to the 32. Welcome to the review booth or the kitchen table. I prefaced this by saying I was gonna do this a little bit out of order, just a day or so out of order, not too bad. Still have my hat on, Happy New Year's for everybody again. And I got this fancy shirt for Christmas, so rocking that. One thing I found out when I was uh, putting some stuff away from yesterday, trying to find room was, um, you can see behind me here, I have a Doers 32, a Doers 21, and you would hope it would be a Doers 27. It is not, it is another Doers 21 that I bought sometime and forgot about and stuffed it in the back of a <laughs> back of a cabinet so this will either be a backup or a or a return back again a small bottle it's a 375 um, one advantage to it being a 375 is um you know if you don't like it you have about a huge bottle but at I forgot exactly what I paid for this, maybe 140, 100, put that one here. And uh, I guess we'll, I think this is the old one. So we'll do the old one. Same, same basic box. Twenty one year, and it's the same process, just uh, not as long, obviously. And then there's one in the middle of the 27, and I haven't, I, don't, I think I may have seen that one once. Oh, 
Oh, it's a great quirk pop. Reacquired. All right. I didn't label these. And they're exactly the same. <laughs> Shoot. All right, now I've got them labeled. <laughs> So I can uh, tell the two apart because I'll put them on the uh, the turntable here and uh, spin them around and then we won't know which is which. And I'll nose them, taste them, review them, and then compare them and then see which one I think is the 32 and which one is the 21 and try to get some notes out of them and, and go from there. Uh, looking at the color, Asian, the coloration of the two, side by side, let's see there's they look pretty they look pretty similar this is the 32 over here and it doesn't look a whole lot denser than the 21 so this should be very interesting put it in here I won't shouldn't be able to tell which is which even having had the other one since I'm so bad at up notes but I think again I'm gonna say the reason I'm so bad at it is uh, that day anyway I had had barbecue <laughs> so I was just smelling the barbecue that I hoarded uh, earlier in the day and the uh, I think I had a William LaRue Weller also so I was probably a little biased with that okay I don't know which is which down here and we'll go for the nose this one you can really pull out the the fruits and some of the other notes that uh, I know the curiosity public guys got out of it they're really right up front and the smoke is coming out of this one bit more and let's go back to this yeah the note the uh, you know the overtones that this one has that this one doesn't is remarkable so I can, I can only imagine which is which but we'll find out down the road they said they were getting uh, grilled peach dates plums cognac they said they got some barbecue out of it. I'm like, uh, maybe that's why I couldn't smell anything but barbecue. Maybe that's all there is, is barbecue, but. I can definitely get the fruit tones out of it. I'm not getting a lot of spice. They call it baking spice. What is baking spice? Pepper? Salt? Uh, saffron? I, I, not being a chef or anything, even a lousy cook, I don't know. Definitely richer flavor or richer nosing coming out of this one on the left. I'm gonna let these open up a little bit more. So I'll just come back in a second. I'm trying to be a little bit serious here. Maybe not working out so well. Definitely, I mean, a hint of plum. Um, or some sort of a, a fruit, you know, but um, maybe a peach, you know. Of course, now that I know what they were saying, I'm like, well, maybe that's what's in there. Kind of go back to my video with the uh, the wheel of notes and how good I am at getting them. This one is just much richer, and I can, <laughs> I'm guessing which is which. I can only imagine. So let's uh, let's go in for a taste. It's great across the palate and the finish is pretty long. It's coating, coating real well. Maybe there's a little bit of the peat, a little bit of the barbecue. Um, I'm not getting the fruit as much. It is still lingering, it's still hanging on. I'm gonna have to have some water in between. Of course, I didn't put any here on the table, so I'll have to go get some. Definitely the char, definitely either the peat or the charred peat. I can get that. I don't quite get 
cognac on it. Uh, it is a sherry finished cask. Sherry finished in a, or finished in a sherry cask. Get that in the right order. But uh, stand by. All right, let's try. I mean this, the nose on this one is, fin it's unbelievable. A lot more flavor. Um, definitely getting the peat. Some of the, uh, you know, the charcoal tones coming out of it. I'm not getting quite so much any of the fruits. Maybe they've been muted by the, you know, the little bit of the, you know, the, the char um, or the barbecue, as they were saying. Um, it's finish. It's lingering, but not as much as this one was lingering. So I, uh, I think they're the same proof. Let's see, 46, 46, same proof. It's definitely lingering on the palate. I'm getting the barbecue and the smoke, not getting a lot of the fruit. You know, uh, whether it's a grilled peach or uh, date or plum or anything like that, it is not, it's very good. I mean, it's, it went down pretty easy. It's not super high proof, 90, 92. But now I'm still getting on the back of the tongue and the back of the throat, I'm still getting that taste, which is Fantastic, it hasn't gone away yet. Hmm. I think I think on the other video, I felt that, you know, that whatever it was I was tasting was hanging around, hanging around, it's still there. And so that that's what made it very interesting and very palatable. This one doesn't hang around as long. I can feel it just go down and take the taste with it. It doesn't have quite the finishing as this one does. Um, the barbecue notes are a lot more muted. And um, maybe that's the peat that's a little more muted. The peat, the peat isn't like in your face on either of them. It's very toned down. Maybe that's the, also the, the, the sherry finishing. But I'm not definitely not getting any fruit tones, but it also, it goes away really quick compared to this one. As I'm getting down here in the bottom, I, I'd really want to look and see which is which, even though I spun it around and didn't really look. But I can only imagine it just worked out, but we'll see. We'll just look. Yep, that's the 21. So the older 32, this guy is, uh, has a lot more finishing, a lot more flavor to it. Uh, it sticks around a lot longer. It's a little bit smoother. Than the 21. The 21 isn't bad by any stretch. I might even keep that other bottle as a backup because, you know, why not have a couple of them at, you know, 50 bucks out of the Costco. So this was not 50 bucks out of the Costco. Uh, I may even look for the 27 because that should be right in the middle of the palate. Uh, right, right in the middle of the palate. Right in the middle of the, the age. Six years and another five years and see how that works out. But um, if you can find the 32, I would spend the extra money to go with that. I mean, it really is very good. I would look up the Curiosity Public guys uh, to see their review on it. It's much more in depth. They they go they even rate the bottle. Nine, I think, 10 out of 10 on a parallelogram bottle. <laughs> so they have a lot more higher, a lot more extensive ranking system. The taste is up to 20. I would say, you know, this one's. 19 or 20 and this one's 7, 16, 17. I mean, they're very, they're pretty close in taste. This one just has a longer finish, a lot more flavor, a lot more nose uh, going in. And so um, I may not even pour these together. Like well, that, would that make a 27? I don't think so. Try this again, just for, just while we're here. Yeah, that smoke flavor, it's a little muted and then pow, it just, it just hits me right right after it's gone down. 
and hangs on. It's really, it's very interesting how that works out and it is very smooth. And so um, it's a great sipping scotch. And this process that they use, the, the double double process, must help smooth it out in the sherry finish. And I have some other sherry or PX cast. It says it's PX cast finished, yeah. PX sherry cask. And I've got, I think I've got a Breckenridge that's maybe a sherry cask. I'll have to look. Be good to do those three together and see how they play out. But the Breckenridge is not even 21 years. If it's a year, I'd be shocked, so. That smell good. You know, it has the fruit hints to it, a little bit of smokiness on the nose. And then going down, this one hits that barbecue, or the bar, I don't know if it's barbecued peat, but the peat is really low. I'm gonna have to find a high peat monster to see what that peat note really, really comes out across, comes across as, because in this, I'm not, I'm not really getting a bunch of it. Yeah, the 32 just has so much more flavor than the 21, and uh, that's probably why it's $1,500 more, I would say. Anyway, um, go back to the unboxing, or just leave it right there. <laughs> or the uh, go back to the uh, you know the rest of the video where I tear through everything that's come up over the holiday haul, and I appreciate you rewatching this or watching this for the first time, and rewatching from the previous um, less than extravagant review. Uh, hope this was a little bit better and a little bit earlier in the, in the, in the video. But have a very happy new year and all the best for 2022. And we're back and I'm sure the 32 and 21 comparison that you just saw was really informative. I found the 21 at a Costco. It was probably much easier to get than a 32 is now. The 32 was kind of a pain, but I've heard people are still able to get it, though it may be a little uh, uh, higher mail order or or you can't find it in the country. Anyway, let's go through uh, some of the things I picked up. I'll almost do them in reverse order, but we'll see what comes up. Picked this up yesterday, <laughs> Johnny Smoking Gun out of uh, Corktown, Detroit. I've heard so many bad things about it and I saw it on the shelf. I've seen it on the shelf at Bob's Lake City Liquor for uh, a number of years, that's not true. I've seen this on the shelf a number of months and uh, it's still there and still there and I said, I'm just gonna get it because I had picked up my winning Bob's Lake City Liquor Woodenville Apple Stave uh, raffle pick out of Woodenville Whiskey Company. And what makes this, to me, in kind of an important um, see the color in there. What to me makes this an important bottle is not only is it a pick from Woodenville Whiskey, but it's Bob's Holiday Raffle. And for those of you not in the Pacific Northwest who don't know what Bob's Holiday Raffle is, he takes all of his, not, maybe not all of them, but he takes the majority of his uh, high-end bottles, allocated bottles, uh, bottles that he's going to get that he hasn't gotten yet that he knows he's going to get. Anyway, he batches those up and for, 20, for a $25 gift card, you get one entry into the raffle, up to five. I put in $400, four entries, and there were probably 30 to 40 allocated bottles. You know, there's probably 10 really hard to find. I think there was a Jack 10 in there, and a, or a Coy Hill maybe. Um, I'm not sure if he had, I, while I rated the, I think the, there was a couple Pappies and a couple of William LaRue Wellers and uh, a Sazerac, there were seven, you know, there were some really hard to get bottles in there. There were some that I'd seen around. Um, what that gives you when you get picked in the raffle is the opportunity to purchase that bottle. It is, I believe, roughly if it's not msrp it's roughly msrp it's not like you have the option of buying this at a thousand dollars i don't think that's the case i think he keeps them at a very uh reasonable rate which i've seen on some of his other uh like i got an elmer t lee there that was 
50 bucks. So he tends to do this on occasion and I think uh, that's great. The pick, barrel pick that he had of the, um, the Woodenville, this one, um, why did I get this? Was I the 51st person and I missed out on the really highly allocated bottles? No, he bought an entire barrel, I believe, or whatever, so he had like 200 and some of these. I think there were probably uh, 400 some entries, 350, 400 some entries, so I feel fortunate to have gotten that bottle. He donated almost 1,500 gift cards to local charities. And they weren't like Starbucks gift cards. These are like gift cards for places where people can go and get either toys or food or whatever they need. And um, almost $40,000 for the community. And I think that is really what um, not only the season is about, but you know, trying to be fair on how you're going to um, offload these uh, really higher end and hard to find bottles. So enough of that, uh, it was great. For Christmas, I got uh, a uh, flask, so that's nice to have. Also from, uh, well, up that direction, this is a, an Eagle Rare Super Lucky Barrel Pick. And this was marked down, it was on sale, and always nice to find something on sale for, I think it was a $50 pick, marked down from 70, so I picked up two bottles. This is what is one of these bottles is going to the uh, tasting tonight. Put that over there. I got another for Christmas. I got a uh, Woodenville whiskey, uh, just one of their straight bourbon whiskeys, 90 proof. I got that as a gift for my pseudo, pseudo secret Santa. Not really all that secret. Uh, while I oh, while I was also up at Super Lucky, I picked up a Jim Beam Ghost, Ghost of Christmas Past. Didn't really say that, but that's what I'm calling it. And so it's got a little color to it. We'll uh, put that up with some of the others that I have an idea for. that I've been kind of hoarding or collecting uh, the white whiskeys. What else? Uh, oh, how about this? This is a gift to me. Some uh, rocks glasses and some of these bar and shield <laughs> Harley Davidson etched silhouette logo and cubes. So uh, you put the cubes as I've done on a previous video with the granites. I may have to revisit those and see how the stainless rocks go. Um, why did I buy this along with some of the, you can't see in the background, but there's a tree, the holiday festive Christmas tree, and it's got some of the um, ornament tanks, uh, gas tanks that Harley puts out. Why did I do this? Because I'm an idiot. And if you spent $300, I also bought a battery, which I won't show you. You got this. And what is this? Who cannot not have? If you're a Harley guy or a Harley person, another box. Oh, it says Jet City Harley Davidson at the bottom. I didn't even realize that. A box with a Harley Davidson decanter. So I'll make this uh, likely one of my infinity bottles. I thought that was kind of a neat presentation. Heavy duty. This uh, <laughs> this for the drop test might actually survive. Talk about heavy duty. So I'll make this into a uh, Infinity Harley Infinity bottle. But had to spend a bunch of money to get it. But uh, I bought a bunch of bourbon stuff for it, so that works out okay. Some of the other things I picked up. Everybody knows what this box looks like. Get this out of the way. Masters Keep One. Picked this up, a, I don't know, a month or so ago. There you go. I actually picked this up from what I think are people around the Pacific Northwest Seattle Issaquah area call uh, the museum because they've got all of their very high end uh, uh, whiskeys and bourbons behind the uh, counter up on the top, sh top shelf, way up high because they. Um, have marked way up thousand plus dollars on most of it. This was, and the hard part about that place is they include the tax, kind of like Super Lucky does, in their price, and it was right about two hundred dollars. And up here, twenty percent tax. Back that out. 
here at, at least MSRP, and I think the guy was kind of surprised he had it priced at MSRP. And you pay cash, you get a 5% discount. So whatever that worked out to be, I think it was right around $200. So I think it was right about uh, MSRP for that place, which is unheard of. Uh, what else? Oh, let's go back to this. What is this? I kind of forgot what this is. Oh, <laughs> dogfish head, straight whiskey. Um, I've got an idea for uh, this dogfish head. They are also a beer maker of dogfish head beer. So I've got an idea for this. Picked this up at Ballard. I hadn't been there before, so that was kind of interesting. I thought that would be a good comparison to another brewery's uh, whiskey. They might start making. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, FAEO2. Um, got found this. I think I got this just down the street um, at the Thriftway. Um, no, it's been kind of hard to find, and I've ran across it in a couple other spots. I got it down the street primarily because I want to get in, not get into their good graces. I want to be in uh, their good graces down there so I can. Uh, be on their list for some of the other items that come up during the year. So they'll think, oh, he's, he's purchased from us before. So try to spread it around a little bit and um, be a good customer. Where I can't be a good customer is where I got these. And I haven't opened them yet. I thought I would do it live here. The Kupu Spirits Whiskey from Maui. Maui Distillery. Maui Distillery also makes beer in their uh, brewery, Maui, Maui Brewery. So, aged on the slopes of Halakala, uh, aged on the slopes of Halakala, Hala, <laughs> aged on the slopes of Halakala, um, locally crafted on Maui, Hawaii. So, we've got a bottle of this, of the whiskey and the white whiskey. So we got both of those, brought those back from a little vacation that we had, I had. And um, we'll see how the brewery distilling, similar to the dogfish head distilling and brewery, how they compare with their, uh, both of the distillates that they've come up with and with the beer that they brew, because I know I can get that. 12th Hawaii Distillers Reserve. I got this on the Big Island. It's 12th Hawaii Distiller because he was just he was the 12th distiller to apply for a license and get one in Hawaii. So it's not Big Island Distillery. I guess somebody got sideways about that because somebody else had Big Island. I did a video on the distillery tour not too long ago. These are just I'm just opening these up for this. Holiday Hall. Kona, coffee spirits. So I think everything on the Big Island, they do a Kona coffee type of expression. Whether it's Kona coffee, Kona beer, Kona distilleries, they are not partnered with the uh, Kona brewery. So I couldn't really do a, a tie-in. I told them you should do that. But this is the honey shine. So going back to that video, maybe I'll stick it over here somewhere. The honey shine is what he uses to, uh, before, uh, as his distillate before he ages it in the two barrels, somewhat similar to the tours, only not for 21 to 32 years, um, into two barrels that it ages, and I think then he dumps it into a third one for the final aging. So that should be interesting how that tastes comparison in comparison to the other two. Now. I'm gonna save the gift for last because I absolutely don't know what's in that. But let me get this box here. But it did come in the holiday haul time frame, which did not include the summer haul or the fall haul. I guess it was the fall haul. Summer haul, fall haul. 93 proof Yellowstone. I thought uh, the Yellowstone TV show was, um, I haven't watched any of it, but maybe. You know, this will be a good thing to watch it with. I know some people are doing that, and I've heard some reviews are like on it, so we'll see. Yes. 
Oh. Oh yeah, I did buy this. <laughs> the Kentucky Owl Wiseman. So, uh, very interesting stuff on the back. That's what I'm perplexed about. Big label game going on here. So we'll do uh, a view of this and I've got another Kentucky Owl. None of the big expensive ones, only the cheap ones, which is kind of what this is. So we'll see how this um, stacks up against the other not very expensive Kentucky Owl. Aha! Talk about bottle game. The IW Harper 15 year. So I've been waiting to find this. Um, ooh, it's loose, but it's still on there, so that's good. Um, I've been waiting to find this around here. I, I saw it once and it was a couple hundred dollars. Uh, Lux Life had it pretty much at MSRP. Uh, and the shipping was, again, less than the tax here, so that was good. And I added in two other bottles that were less. So this is good, a little Art Deco. I've got some plans for um, things with good bottle game. So this is pretty cool. So I got that going. Now for the gift. All these others, other than the Woodenville, I did buy myself. This one. If I cut it right after this, you'll know it wasn't liquid. But it says it's from a wine fulfillment center. I hope it's not wine. Oh, look at this. Fantastic. This is from my sister and family in Colorado. Stranahan's Blue Peak. Single malt. Solera finish. Rich and mellow. Oh, that's great. I don't have this. I do have a couple other Stranahan's, so we can do a flight of those and see how it works out from Colorado breweries. So that's kind of the quick uh, holiday haul, if you will. We got some, uh, obviously, a lot here to drink through and uh, a couple things to drink and a uh, couple things to drink with. So uh, stay tuned. I hope everybody had a fantastic Christmas and I hope for everyone to have a so much better 2022 than we've had in 2021. Like I always say, pour two glasses because you never know who's going to stop by and maybe a better pour three or four. Have a great one. What a mess. <laughs>